everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have a Malaysian person. Winnieland! Who I'm going to fire right now. And an American person. Why aren't we reviewing? This is my second favorite issue of the series. Why aren't we reviewing? Review faster. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you, want to, you want to move along quick before you forget about all the cool, awesome things that we have to say about this comic, don't you? Come on. This is one big, one big comic of shipping fodder. Oh, God. It is. It is. For any of you guys who don't know, we are reviewing the number eight of the Friends Forever comics. That is the Applejack and Rarity One, written by Katie Cook, with art by Andy Price. And it's titled, uh, what, Trains, uh, Trains, Planes, and Carts with Wheels? <laughs> Technically, it's Rains, Trains, and Cart Wheels. Carts yes. with Wheels. Carts with wheels. The width is so tiny in that title, isn't it? Yep. It is the easily overlooked. Is it? Carts on motorcycles. <laughs> Carts on motorcycles. Oh, on planes. On top of a ship that's been hit in an iceberg. Oh, God. Anyway. <laughs> I, I could actually see that happening in Yu-Gi-Oh. There is no ships hitting icebergs in here because there is, this ship is floating and sailing all, all the way around. <laughs> ah, so... What do we do? We talk uh, synopsis first, start start right away, or should we go with first impressions? First impressions, really. I I like doing that. Yeah, let's let's do that because okay, uh, I always prefer the inverted alphabetical order all the time. So in here more than ever, let's 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 see what Silver Quill has to say about this comic. So Silver, what what are your impressions of this comic? Well, first readers are like ew, and Applejack's like ah. And, oh, sorry, wrong impressions. <laughs> <laughs> Applejack's face is pretty much like that. Yes. Yes. On the front, the front cover really does sum up this entire uh, comic wonderfully. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I've said before that it, Katie Cook really shines at just the slice of life fun stories, and this one is, is like her playground. Both she and Andy Price just seem to have so much fun with this comic, and it features my favorite odd couple. I've always loved. Applejack's practicality with Rarity's drama slash artistic, uh, what's the proper word? Flippancy, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I mean, they are, it's so great to see them as friends, but they're friends who don't always get along. You have a very natural conflict going on right there. Exactly. And that's, that's great characters. When they're so well established, they play off each other like this. And yet by the end, you, know, you don't sense that they're any less friends. Plus, we get just a ton of visual gags. Uh, Equestria gets all these little sites and uh, monuments. We have one future hiccup established with the bull rustlers, but in this comic, they're, they're, they're pretty fun. I'm still going to boo them when they appear. <laughs> what, what do you think, Norman? I enjoy this comic highly. The Last week when I said this, this book was memorable was because I bought it at Buck. And... The other thing is, after Buck, I waited a week and went to a convention in Singapore where I got to meet the artist himself. I met Andy Price, talked to him about the work, told him how much I love it. And it's just so wow. There's a lot of wow. Uh, the background stories aside, the comic itself, it's not bad. Um, there's this whole story of this odd couple where... One person is just trying to get the job done, yet the other one sees everything as fun in games, which, if you think about it, should be technically a Pinkie Pie and Rarity kind of story. But the role of Pinkie Pie is played by Rarity, and the role of Rarity is played by Applejack in this story, where Applejack just wants things to get done, yet things don't go her way, and hijinks ensue. I really like this one. Well, you know the, you know the trope, blue oni, red oni, right? Mm, yeah. In the MLP universe, each each is uh, each one is the respective blue oni, red oni. Like Applejack is the blue oni to Rainbow Dash, and Rarity is the blue oni to Applejack. It's the 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 level-headed character compared to the non-level-headed character. It is funny though, because in this comic, the situation is kind of kind of inverted. If you remember in the People are going to make parallel. We're going to make a lot of parallelisms with "Look Before You Sleep," which is the first episode <laughs> that paired up these two characters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
uh, putting them together in a situation where neither of them can get away from the other. And if you remember clearly, that was mostly a rarity putting up with Applejack's mannerisms and how... Uh, we can say excitable she can get to be. Mm-hmm. Well, in this comic, it's the complete opposite. <laughs> Applejack is the level-headed one, while Rarity is the one that is so <laughs> absent-minded and happy and chill. For like, oh my god, we're going to whiny land and we're going to go so do all this sightseeing and it's going to be so pretty. And oh, apples, yeah, well, we can take care of those later. But no, 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 whiny land. So well, yeah, if, if you do think about it, right? If you do think about it, the whole situation with. This one, why Rarity got really excited is because she's going to the quote-unquote Hollywood of Equestria. So for yeah. Rarity to go to something like that, that's really exciting for her status. Because then she can go after a celebrity. Yep. Oh, yeah. yep. yep. <laughs> I mean, she's, got, she's gone after nobility, a hipster, uh, depending on the comics. She's gone after six other archetypes. <laughs> If if she can uh, crush on a celebrity, then she gets a free toaster. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, no, she uh-huh. wants to go to she wants to go to the Pony Hollywood so she can uh, she can try to hook up with George Clooney. <laughs> uh, by the way, the place is called Applewood. <laughs> uh, Applewood. Applewood. Like, oh my god! Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> of all the places. So, James, uh, what about you? What, what do you think? Uh, okay, I, I, the three of us, we were born in the 80s, right? Mm-hmm. And we grew up uh, in the late 80s and then through the 90s, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, grown up is a, a loose term in application to myself. We, we, we got older during the 90s. <laughs> I we won't were... grow up, I won't grow up. <laughs> I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, now it reminds me of but, that commercial. By yeah, her. no, it's like, we were we were raised during the 90s, and um, we watched we watched comedies like uh, all, all of the National Lampoon series that, okay, it started during the 70s, but they became really super popular during the 80s and 90s. Um, movies like... Uh, like, you know, holiday vacation, and of course, the one that this comic is based on trains, wheels, and uh, trains, trains planes. Uh, planes, and automobiles. And uh, this comic is very much like those olden, well established classic, mo- cl- classic comedies uh, that they will always star uh, Leslie Nielsen or Steve Martin or John Candy. and it has the same timing, it has the same feel, it has the same chemistry, and it has a very similar structure. This is an, this is a snowball kind of comedy where the situation just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like they, they lose a train because they, they have to detour, then they take the wrong train, then they end up going, uh, going through with, on a plane, they crash on a mountain, then they have to take a, a, a cart to, to get to their place, and oh my god, what's gonna happen? It's, and, the best thing is that all of these things that keep happening in the background and in the foreground, they don't detract from the two, ca- the two main characters. True, true. That Rarity and Applejack are in every single page of uh, this comic, with the exception of the first two, where, uh, where Ab- is establishing that Applejack has to go to Applegood and she has to find someone else to go with her. So, <laughs> But it is, it, in my opinion, this is my second favorite of the of the friends forever we are yet to get to my absolute favorite one but this is a very very well established close second that is such a good comic to cleanse the palate after reading the wild west arc yeah mm-hmm. no not only that, that even though sorry even though even though it came out it came out before the wild west arc mm-hmm. But it was like, oh, this is such a great comic. It's awesome. I love Katie Cook and Andy Price. Ooh, the Wild West Arc. I cannot wait to see what they have to offer for that one after the comic. Um, yeah, can I go back to the French Forever issue number eight? Thank oh, you. God. Oh, oh honest, God, this is such a great honestly, comic. Honestly, honestly, this, like I said, this is one of my favorites. Like, I don't know. I haven't put a rank onto everything, like which one's my favorite and which one's not. But uh, like I said, this one is very memorable. If I'm not mistaken, you got one copy, right, James? Yes. 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 I have not one, I have three copies. And one of them is very special because it's signed by none other than Andy Price. Because this guy here, 
whose name is Norman, he got me a copy and got the author of the comic to sign it for me. Because that's how awesome he is. Not only that, you also got a commission by him. And Yeah, I got that picture of Movie Slate <laughs> and an extra picture saying, this is a great design for a pony, don't, let, don't get discouraged. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> he drew it so fast. I I even asked him, was it difficult? <laughs> he said no, it was different. <laughs> wow. Mm. But yeah, oh, that that's the whole thought on the comics uh review. Well, oh, oh, we're already done. Okay, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> <laughs> now, we could we could very much end right there because we are going to it is already it's pretty clear that we all love this comic that we are uh, big fans of it, but no, we, for the sake of keeping it consistent, we should review and talk about each and every part of it, because as much as I like this comic, yeah, there is one thing that I hate in it that doesn't ruin the thing, but, oh my god, is it a problem. But anyway, we should start reviewing the comic, and you know what, this time, this time, just like before, because you were doing it so well, Silver, I think I'm going to give you the reins on this one, and I will take care of, re- of uh, I will hold the, uh, hold the reins again on, on issue number nine. But if it's no problem for you, do you think you can uh, take care of... Uh, you know, going page after page for me. Sure, I think, that's okay. I think I, I think I can get the bit in my teeth. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you have a beak. You don't have teeth. How do you? The human form. They're dentures. <laughs> They're dentures. Oh, whoa, uh, Norman, Norman, but... conjuring all kinds of inappropriate things. Hey, you, you <laughs> were a human. You, you were a human. We saw it. We saw it, and you became a demon. Yeah, we saw that too. I become a demon <laughs> like every other week. I am the anti-Celestia. Bow and offer me your mustaches. Uh, no. All right, so I'll try reviewing like this, but I'll get sore throat, so forget that. <laughs> All right, so we begin reins, trains, and cart with wheels. <laughs> uh, Shouldn't it be and, and a cart with wheels? Well, there you go. Zero out of ten, poor grammar, worst comic ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what is wrong with the writing in this comic? I mean, God. God damn it, Katie. <laughs> Wait, carts with wheels. It's hid, the, the S is hidden by Applejack's uh, hat. Oh. Actually, that's the, that's the thing. This, this is a deceptive title. It just plays with your eyes. Yep. There's so anyway. many things to look at. Speaking of eyes, we have a certain cross-eyed male mare dropping off letters to the Apple family. I'm, I'm sure she's no one of repute. Yeah. I'm sure she likes muffins, we, too. Uh, I don't know where people get that. <laughs> but... This, of course, interrupts uh, Big Macintosh's learn to throw your voice lessons, which might explain an awful lot of things. <laughs> anyway, this is a letter from the from the West Coast Oranges who want to incorporate apples into their desserts. Apparently, they own a shop. So Applejack is looking for more income because, as we learn on the next page, Big Macintosh ain't the handyman. Uh, Zen the Art of Gazebo may have ended with a ruined gazebo no matter what. <laughs> Silver, before you move on, I, I like to point out something. Uh, I, I, I mentioned a lot about meeting Andy Price on this episode. And not only that I met him, I also saw an original sketch of the page with this. In the middle where you see Muffin Pony there handing the mail to uh, Granny Smith. In the original sketch, this was, uh, what you want to call this? Granny Smith was like, operating a tele gram machine or was it Moscow? I, I, was it telegram was it something in Moscow? i think it was a it it, it seems like a like a telegraph machine i mean maybe they they decided to remove it in case you know oh god Cranny smith is is working for the germans <laughs> it's the enigma machine but but anywho uh, original sketch was that and i'll try to put a link into the show notes so people would know what i'm saying because this would be strange but yeah originally it was that and the whole Picture looks really cool with how Granny Smith is wearing headphones and glasses and decoding and stuff, which is really cool. <laughs> there is, however, there there are these X's throughout the image, which I'm guessing are some sort of measurement tool for perspective. Probably, probably, and probably, and there are two X's smack dab in the middle of her eyes, which makes her look rather expired. <laughs> Actually, you know the- what? I know exactly what those X's are for. I just I just okay. realized. All right. Can you explain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. This is actually part of a. This is something similar that I would, uh, that I what I use when I am doing uh, comics myself. Those areas that are marked with the X are supposed to be completely covered in black oh. when you ink them. Oh, okay. 
so when doing the inking, you have to cover all of that. You have to fill that space with uh, black ink. Oh, okay, that's one way to explain that makes, it. That makes sense. I was always taught the best way to draw a circle is by drawing a sort of X and using that as a basis. So I thought that might be it, but that makes a lot more sense. I thought drawing a circle the... was drawing a hit and then erasing every part of it. Mm, different, the different, best way to... <laughs> different strokes for different bro- blokes. <laughs> I thought that the best way to draw a circle is to shoot at it. <laughs> you, you, you make a perfect circle with the bullet hole. Anyway. Right. Well, e- either way, it's a fascinating image, and yet at the same time, that looks like an ex-Smith right there. <laughs> and given that we're about to have her in the next comic, ooh, oh my, uh, I'd rather she not be, you know, Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, we learn that Big Macintosh tends to break a lot of stuff on the farm. So this is a, an excellent chance for Applejack to, one, glare at her brother, and two, generate some more revenue, because this farm is always in need of cash. <laughs> it doesn't matter how well they do or what success they enjoy, they are always strapped for cash. Oh, that's true. So, it, so it's either Big Macintosh's uh, handiwork, which is hard without hands, <laughs> and, and yet he's wielding a hammer, go fig, uh, or... Applejack's really not good with money. <laughs> uh, Just saying. True, true. Well, in the show, there's, they spent whole, uh, all three seasons to um, raise money for the barn, build the barn, demolish the barn. Was it in that order? I forgot. <laughs> oh, no, it was demolish the barn, raise money for the barn, and then raise the barn. Yeah, that's what we got, a song. Yep. One, two, three, four. <laughs> anyway, Applejack can't... Uh, bring her own saddlebags because Apple Bloom tries to use it for base jumping. <laughs> and and the fact that Applejack just lets her sister go face first off the uh, top of a well in this attempt. Sister of the year right there. Some lessons need to be learned the hard way. I, th- I think Applejack has completely given up <laughs> on trying to talk Apple Bloom out of doing more Jack as a stunt. <laughs> Yeah, you go ahead and stick that fork in the socket. See what you learn. <laughs> oh, no. S- side note, do, do not stick a fork in a socket, people. Don't. Natural selection will not allow it. Oh, Darwin Award. Hi, for sure. I'm Apple Bloom, and this is... Hi, I'm Apple Bloom, and this is Cutie Jacks. <laughs> dun, 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 Oh, no. Anyway, so without a, without a saddlebag, Applejack goes to rarity for a non-frilly saddlebag. But the moment she says Applewood... Her destination. Well, guess who wants to come along? <laughs> uh, Twilight. Yes, it turns out this was a deceptive cover. <laughs> uh, rarity. Uh, rarity. So, you, you, the... you, you, you... <laughs> no, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> well, I'm I'm about to move on. So if uh, if you cut, if you got something to say, you best say it now. I'm not turning this review around. <laughs> Are we doing... I, I love the fact that if you notice the inks on the the panel were. Applejack and Applejack's and Rarity's noses are touching. If you look at that, there is no inks in that panel. Oh, yeah, I noticed that. There is no inks in between their noses. It's like, it's like that, wow. <laughs> they really want to, want to hint at it, don't zip, they? Zip, 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 zip. <laughs> and Rarity looks hey. so cute. She's so happy. Rare Jack is now an Uber being. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fuse, like oh. the gems. Also, may I say, it is, it is brilliant that of course, uh, uh, here we go, starting with the uh, parallelisms with the movie. In this case, Applejack is Steve Martin and Rarity is John Candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because Applejack is the one that wants to, you know, <laughs> the one that wants to go to the destination and just, that's, that's it. Rarity is the one that wants to stop to every side, same place, and just have fun. I love the fact that Best Pony turns into John Candy, <laughs> you know, one of, one of the best comedians ever. Oh, yeah, I love that. Honestly, I, I I said this from the beginning, and I I I still hold to it. Rarity's sudden change of attitude here is, I I won't say canon breaking or whatever, but it's oh. not really like her to suddenly go oh. into a. Sp- of, oh, let's go here, let's go there, let's go here, let's go there. Well, may I make an argument? All right, go ahead. May I make an argument, may I make a, an argument from your favorite character? Yeah, go, go, go. Is that, when you think about it, Rarity works in, his pla- in her place every single day. 
like uh, she's she's at Carousel Boutique, always working, always with her head on dresses and all that. And Applejack is also doing the same at the farm. Uh, that doesn't mean that Applejack's job is over when when she leaves the farm. It's actually, it keeps going. But Rarity sees this as an opportunity to have fun, to enjoy herself, to get out of the boutique and say, I'm going to enjoy myself, I'm going to have fun. Well, Applejack is not there to have fun. She is there to, you know, do business. So... I don't think it's canon breaking because Rarity is not stranger to, you know, taking a break and just enjoying herself and having a fun time. Hmm. Okay. You were going to say something right there, Silver. I completely, I, I, I trumped over, yeah. No, no, I was about to move forward with the next page, but I, I agree that this doesn't seem out of character for Rarity. She's known to, to be, how to say, flighty when she's entertained. Uh, when, when she has a business issue, she's all, she can go all kinds of crazy, but she's also been known to have a spirit fun. So I don't, I don't see as much of a contrast with her in the show in this case. Mm, Okay. Okay. But to each their own. The nice thing about good characters is that they mean something different to each person. Of course. Anywho, anywho, the train's off and away, but during a stopover, they rarely wants to see the largest ball of cashmere yarn. (laughs) Cashmere yarn. Okay. Which, uh. It, I got to tell you, this this tail is quite a yarn, <laughs> and if you spin it just right, <laughs> I so, want to I, I, I want to think this is a direct reference to Sam and Max hit the road. Oh, <laughs> just think, if you can think about it, which it, probably it, it, is. it is, it it probably is because it even has the the Overlook restaurant on top of the tower, like in Sam and Max hit the road. So yeah, you know what? Screw it. It's a Summon Max reference. <laughs> That's how I take it. Team Schaefer now has a shout out on the MLP comics. As well, he when should. When you think, when you think things couldn't get any better, mm-hmm. <laughs> all all will be referenced by series end. Oh yeah. <laughs> also, may I say, if you look at the uh, on the bottom left panel of the page, you can see Applejack trying to pet a goat, and the goat has been eating one of the scripts for season five. <laughs> <laughs> so turns out that was the one where all the main six become alicorns. <laughs> so apparently, that's the the goat was the delay. All right. <laughs> so then, so if season five should ever skip a weekend, that's why. Yep. <laughs> they it that goat ate the script, and we will blame that goat, and we will blame it forever. <sighs> oh, but. My gosh. Meanwhile, they introduce, uh, let's see, who is this pony with the yarn cutie mark? I know that her, she's named on the last page. The, oh, actually, she's just known as the curator. So while the she curator, already ta- yeah. Yep, of yarn. Mm-hmm. Well, they talk about how many, uh, how the numbers break down depending on the complexity of the sweaters. Fascinating stuff. Applejack, for some reason, falls asleep. I can't imagine why. It sounds so fascinating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and son of a gun, they've got to rush to catch up with the train that is departing, but guess what? Oh, also for your uh, for your further uh, National Lampoon edification, bottom left page, uh, bottom left corner of the next page, Griswold's uh, world of matching shoes and belts. <laughs> Griswold, Griswold, <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, get it? Uh, uh, I don't want to. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, they make it onto the train, but guess guess what? It's not the right train. <laughs> They're going the wrong way. Oh god. And they will not get there until morning. And that this this is this is along alongside with uh Applejack's and Rarity's chemistry, this is my favorite part of the comic. Applejack's faces. <laughs> every time, in every panel, she has the best expressions ever. And in this one, she has the one thousand miles there. <laughs> She has the she has the I am beyond done with this. Uh, uh, and the the, the 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 fantastic shading and and coloring by Heather Breckel just completely sells it. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> this this is just good. Like <laughs> the Applejack stares like Oh god. <laughs> give me strength. Give me strength. Concern it give me strength. <laughs> this almost became a cupcakes comic. I know. <laughs> Brought her in just the wrong way. Rarity doesn't Apple know she's taking, she's taking her own life in her hooves right now. 
<laughs> Still, this train conductor is pretty uh, accommodating, given the fact that Two Ponies just jumped onto his train as it was leaving, <laughs> and they didn't even buy a ticket. Well, these equipment not for C, not for C Daddle, C Seedle. So how do you pronounce that? Seedle. Seedle. Yeah, Seattle. Yeah. Like a saddle. Seattle. Yeah, it's like Seattle. saddle and Seattle. Instead of Seattle, is like Seattle. Except you're, you're we're double pronouncing the A, so it'd be like Seedle. Not really. I see. You just pronounce oh. the S E as C ad dull. Look, I'm just saying, between the, the title on the first page and this part, I'm really starting to downgrade this based on grammar <laughs> and spelling. You, you, well, okay, easier thing. Horse pun number 137. Yep, true, 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 true. <laughs> so, now, Rarity's all hot to trot for the Pony Bartlett's water ski and jumping boat thrill show, which they see the next morning. And i got to say, they are probably spending a fortune on this trip. Well, Rarity has some cash to do it. I guess so. Well, I hope she has enough cash to pay for that taxi that gets squashed by the uh, jump boat, which it turns <laughs> out happens every show. Now, do they hit a taxi every show? Because that the insurance money on that's got to go crazy. <laughs> Maybe that explains why the taxi driver looks so deranged and angry. He's, he's like, he's like, I know that he's going to fall on my head, but God damn it, I am not going to move. Endurance, endurance of the fittest. <laughs> Uh, oh, no, it think... happened again. Damn. <laughs> Why do I feel like he looks like the cab driver from that movie? You talking to me? <laughs> Are you talking to me? Oh, no. The guy who goes crazy. Oh, no. No, no, indeed. Well, speaking of oh, no's, the heavens, they open, and it's just raining terribly. And for some reason, though, they were in a city. Uh, now they're kind of in the country. I guess they were just walking. Yep, to the train station for seven miles in a city. That Okay. I'll take that as a little contrivance, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but here they are, both both wet and winded from their long run, alone and isolated uh, in an abandoned, abandoned barn. <laughs> Two mares, just alone for the evening. No. Well, it is very <laughs> clear that after Applejack hates her, shakes her mane, she gets righty all wet. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, and very cranky-wanky. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, lo I love that. I want. I want that panel, the one where Applejack is going very cranky, wonky, and and Rarity is so you know her mascara is running out. She's com she's drenched uh, and soaking wet, and I'm like, oh god, I love it. Mm -hmm. You know me. You know me for a, for after a couple of episodes. You know how I am. Yeah. I love to see my favorite character suffer. Yep, yep. That is um. That is um. That is awesome. I like. That. Now you see that. That is making your character suffer. Right. Don't correct. Not what they were doing in the in, in the Wild West arc. God damn it. Yeah, that's just violent. <laughs> oh dear. That's... And yeah, humor is based on pain. That is just the simple truth. But it has to be the right kind of pain. Mm -hmm. Yes, humor is, humor is based on misery, and it has to be aimed correctly. True, true. After the uh, rain clears, we actually see Applejack's business plan that she's been working on this whole trip. <laughs> and it is very direct. <laughs> Sell apples. You know, you know what? Wall Street would be a hell of a lot less complicated if people took <laughs> that nice uh, approach. <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that makes the movie Wolf of Wall Street work in a different way. <laughs> Very much. Uh, Although, speaking of theft, <laughs> Ra Rarity decides to just take some sort of whirlycopter that's in the barn. And she just takes it. It's like, wow, this might belong to someone. Maybe we could buy it. Nope, let's just steal it. Welcome to Grand Theft Auto Equestria. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's more or less what this comic is about. <laughs> Although I will say I love Applejack wearing those aviator goggles, just how huge they are. <laughs> Somehow they look more huge than her actual eyes. Yeah. Uh, also, shout out, shout out to, uh, a shout out, well, indirect shout out to aliens with the flight of friendly skies on the, um, on the aviator's cap, which is the same thing that the pilot in the movie Aliens has written on her own helmet. Uh. It's too bad there's not a We Endangered Species logo on the on the plane. Because <laughs> that's we, exactly we, what they do. With an angry with an angry griffon stomping and shooting a machine gun. That would be fun. 
That would be fantastic. Oh yeah, and I also I also like that it's pedal uh pedal powered, so it does have horse powers after after all. But it's powered by the Earth Pony, yes. Yeah, so only she has the strength. Well, though it's kind it of does, it's, it, it does make sense though. Out of them, out of the two, Applejack will have the, the strongest legs. Uh, after all, she's the one that does all the apple bucking. She's got legs. <laughs> <laughs> she knows how to use them. She has the and, name on everything. I think it's pretty clear, yeah. And for some reason, these two seem to be the bane of a purple-maned Pegasus life. As the as a the great cutie mark Pegasus flying by is the same one who was in the crashing boat on the previous page. Wow. I don't know if they were just reusing stock uh, <laughs> stock designs, but uh, just that that white Pegasus with a violet mane is probably going, who are these ponies and why are they following me? <laughs> oh, boy. But when we say that plain and dangerous ponies, well, not only does it uh, nearly crash with uh, Applejack and Rarity, it also dents the nose of my favorite princess. Princess, <laughs> because, well, yeah. it's more like the eye more than the nose. <laughs> yeah, Crunch. it's more the. Well, that's great. You've blinded my favorite princess. <laughs> thanks, thanks a bunch. You could have at least aimed for Cadence. <laughs> nope. Oh. But we Please add excuse the... our mess as we sculpt over the new edition, Princess Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> Still more okay with Princess Twilight than Princess of Merchandising. A rumph. A rumph, a rumph. <laughs> but to add to the indignity, Rarity is picking Luna's nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. What? But crashing into this monument is significant because Applejack learns they've been flying the wrong way again. At this rate, they're actually going to orbit the, the world and get to Applewood that way. Oh. Meanwhile, poor Queen Chrysalis is currently rejected for being added to the monument. Sign the petition so, to add Queen Chrysalis to the monument. Just one. <laughs> just one. <laughs> just one. By Queen Chrysalis herself. <laughs> lonely. I'm so lonely. <laughs> so Ronry and Sadri are on. <laughs> so... So the trip continues further downhill as Applejack loses her samples, and they wound they wind up in just a generic western town. How you go from a national monument to a generic western town, I don't know, but equestrian ge- geography is odd. Very odd. Mm. Equestrian, geography, equestrian geography has the same <laughs> rhyme and reason as Super Mario World geography. <laughs> anyway, they charter, they charter a coach with the stranger, and he's... Per- Mighty pleased to be taking these ladies across the desert, especially when he sees that Rarity can fit a whole hoof in her mouth. Oh my! Oh my, indeed. Uh, but if he, uh, be, uh, he's going to start talking about the dude here, that pony is totally some alien. <laughs> and yet, what uh, really comes through? You think the thousand mile stare was something else? How about the "I'm going to kill you" red eyed stare? <laughs> Oh god, <laughs> just for even trying to talk. Wow, Rarit, Applejack, you have some problems. Well, I'll agree that I, 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 the funny thing is, Applejack isn't coming across as a bad personality or a, a terrible pony. She's rightly frustrated with how this trip's been going. And Rarity's chipper attitude can be actually be kind of grating. It's kind of funny. Sometimes when things are going bad, you don't want someone to be optimistic, you want someone just to acknowledge. Yeah, things cut stink. True, true. I just work with that. And then, okay, James, uh, I think now, now, now would be a good time for your anger. Ah, uh, okay. I. What is wrong with their names, first of all? What, Jersey Shore? Uh, Doc Holstein? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that one, that one. Jersey Shore is like, I just noticed. Jersey Shore, you're not even trying. Oh, get out of here. God damn it, Jersey Shore. Uh, okay, those of you who know, I know I am not a big fan of the uh, Wild West arc and anything like that. And we got the Wild West arc kind of like, you know, hinted at and uh, uh, how, how do you say it? Kind of like cameo from the bad guys of of the of uh, the Wild West arc arc in here. And here they are, and it's a Longhorns band of bad guys and. It would be an interesting cameo if it wasn't because they get their asses handed to themselves. I, don't know, I think Applejack just got Hulk-like rage. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, if you know what, if they had done this in the Wild West arc, the, the story would be over in two pages. That would be it. I would just kick the, I kick like a Longhorn's butt over there. Like, look at that. She's giving him a like a right side hook, right in the middle of the face, knocking him for good. And so is Rarity doing with all with, with another one of the of the bulls. What is with this? I don't get this. this. Is a wrong way to make a cameo. I tell you. I I now. Well, technically, this was a debut. This this came out before the good, the bad, and the ponies. <laughs> yeah, and, they were. It, yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Silver. Longhorn promises retribution. You haven't seen The Last of Us. We'll be back in another issue. Oh, I, 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 I hate when they break the fourth wall so much. But if you look at it from the other standpoint of how easily they got taken down by just two ponies not even paying attention to them, it's pretty sad because... It's stupid. <clears throat> it is complete, it's a complete waste of potential. I mean, okay. like, you could have anything else, any other character appearing in there. You don't need to have the bad guys from an upcoming issue appearing here and thoroughly sabotaging any kind of threat that they could oppose on the next comics. That's why I never felt uh, there was a conflict going on on the Wild West comic arc, because I was like, oh, it's fine. Rarity and Applejack took these two guys on their own. They, they, they are going to be pushovers. Yeah. What is this? But if you, this is so bad. If you think about it, or if you look at it, right, the whole situation with the, uh, what you call this, the cow wrestlers, uh, the cattle wrestlers, this is actually a good cameo for them to be in. Or in terms of joke bad guys, in this scenario, it works. It works for them to be in this story plot here. But when you carry them over to the main plot line, where they become the real villains in two issues, that is where things break down and don't really work for them. Because... In the issue here, you get to see Rarity and Applejack beating them up with no trouble at all. Well, you know the weakness. There was no convenient stop signs for Rarity to wield. <laughs> and the good, the bad, the ponies. Yeah, also, there is no Twilight Sparkle over here, so it's fine to punch them in the face over and over again. Oh, Actually, now that I think about it, that would have been funny. Twilight realizes, you know what? It's not okay to use magic, but it's okay to give them a whooping. Mm. Next thing you know is Twilight the Sailor Man. <laughs> da, 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 da. No, and the other thing that that uh, ruins this this cameo and makes the characters, uh, the, the, the these gang of bulls completely harmless is that as they are kicking their asses, they are having a they're having a discussion, they're having an argument, and that's where the the point where Rarity realizes that Applejack's plan is completely stupid when it comes to sell the mm-hmm. apples, and that's the point where Rarity is like, okay, no more. Uh, no more holiday trip. I'm going to help my friend. This is a fantastic moment for Rarity, but it's a terrible moment for these uh, quote unquote bad guys. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Like Rarity shines in this. She's like, she's like, what are your projections? Your list of products? Your shipping timelines? Your mission statement? Who is going to handle social media? That's actually I really like that because it shows the side that Applejack doesn't have is that Rarity is a businessman. And Applejack just sells apples for a living. And she says it there. She's like, who doesn't know what an apple is? They sell themselves. And But I completely understand this, that some products, even if you know that it's a sure sale, you have to still work on that. True, true. Or else we wouldn't, we wouldn't have companies selling fruit. True, true. Yeah, exactly. Just, so, go ahead. I just I just get a kick out of this. That uh, R- Rarity reminds me of uh, one of my best friends in the offline world. Uh, who is a very strong business major. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That's the kind of talk she'd give, and I'd be Applejack saying, what? I'm just producing a product. Who cares? <laughs> I did not get this social media, he said on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. And What, but, Twitter? I don't need Twitter, nor Facebook. Uh, I can sell this on my own. Uh, it's a sad truth. You need them now. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's what sucks about it. By the way, I'll just add that uh, my favorite pose for Rarity in this comic, or at least one of, is where she's uh, saying, you take that back to Applejack. 
uh, just so indignant, but with those little marshmallow hooves <laughs> sticking out. I mean, that's the contrast and adorableness. Yep. <clears throat> that is so cute. That is so cute. Uh, and apparently the stranger got them all the way to Coltifornia, <laughs> where they where they not only managed to finally get at a cafe and apparently Rarity works her business magic, we also spy what has got to be the single most terrifying pony in the whole of Equestria. Gem pony? Yeah, I agree. Is that supposed to be Gem from the 80s cartoon? Looks like it. I think that it, that, that looks more like Greta Garbo than, than, I, than I, I, Gem, actually. Yeah, Gem was supposed to be attractive. That pony is just, oh my, ugh. I, 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 yeah, it no, was like... There yeah, is no like Celestia. Mascara. Mascara and the, 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 the lipstick it, and all that. Ugh. It's just truly, it's, well, truly outrageous. Too much Botox, man. Too much Botox. She should she should stop rubbing swines on her <laughs> face every morning. No. Oh, God, no. That's, that's where Botox comes from, in case you're wondering. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, no, but it is good that it, because a couple of months later, we have a cameo from the Marx Brothers poems. Mm. Uh, oh, but but first we have one of the best moments for, for my view, where Applejack apologizes for being so angry, and admittedly, a lot of what went wrong wasn't Rarity's fault directly. True, true. I will say she contributed at least to missing that first train, but everything that kind of went wrong was just cruel fate. And yet, here's the thing. In the show, Applejack is the one to talk rarity uh, into back into sense. She did it in Sister of Social. She did it in um, Simple Ways. Here, rarity is the one giving her a little perspective, helping her with the business and getting her to calm down. And explaining that, you know, friends have fights. But that's not the end of the friendship. And that's a, and that's a fun little moral, something in line with the show. It also is very realistic because any kind of friendship that uh, you may have, it, it is never a streamline of, oh, perfect, this is perfect, there is no conflict, no nothing, this is so unique and fantastic. No, there is going to be up and downs. There is going to be moments where it's awesome being friends with that person and other times that you are going to get mad at each other because that's that's what happens when you combine two very diametrically opposed personalities and that's this that's the thing that is so cool of this comic is that applejack and rarity they are so different they are so they they, they are the perfect opposite of each other but they have those two or three things that have they have in common and they know how to work it out in order not to lose their friendship that's so cool i like it a lot that is definitely the best part of the comic and the thing that is worked on the most is that these two feel like they are friends. Mm -hmm. And this page settles that friendship. Yep. That, of course, th there is no friendship without conflict. And there is no... Th th without the conflict, appreciation for each other cannot arise. So you know there is a lot of self-respect self uh, uh, for each other. Mutual, mutual respect for each other in that page. True, 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 true. And in the next page, we see that, well... <laughs> Uh, Pulchak's taking a lesson from Rarity to take things slow and easy. Oh, and uh, tell us, James, where do they go? We learn! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we <sighs> land. And if nothing else, I appreciate equestrian honesty. <laughs> Surrender all bits at the gates. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Surrender all bits at the gates. Home of Wilhelm the Wombat and Elmer the Eagle. <laughs> <sighs> And we get, and then on the next page, it's just reference after reference of all these great, uh, all rides. these great rides. Uh, although I also like that Rarity and Applejack are dancing the Wanderer uh, <laughs> in the dis in the disco, and that yes. for some reason Captain uh, the Captain from the Pirate Arc is there. Yeah, I you're guess right. Now, I guess now that he, yeah, I guess now that he got hitched, he had to get a job. <laughs> Legitimate business. <laughs> The gentleman business. Jewel is probably hanging out in the water underneath. <sighs> also, may I say, I love the tombstones on the haunted stable uh, ride. I told you I was sick. <laughs> Doctor, lawyer, lawyer, legal clerk, forever buried in his work. <laughs> I swear the I told you I was sick was in a Simpsons Halloween special once. I swear. Also, but just that one little panel about the haunted house is... 
a thousand times better than that horrible Eddie Murphy movie. <laughs> uh, City Bear is cool. What is City Bear referring to? City Bear. I have no, no idea, but more excuse to show Pony Plot. <laughs> yes. Good. Oh, okay. Hey, come on. We've been talking about the plot this whole time. Oh. Hey, oh. Um, Actually, if you tell you what, I will uh, try to look up some information as we give our final thoughts. But first, we have to get to the final destination. They have finally reached the West Coast Oranges, who have no idea Applejack was even coming. <laughs> uh, they're welcoming on board. They're all about having them for dinner, but they gave no com- they gave no communication. So, as a final salt in the wound, we find out that Granny Smith read it wrong, and it's. Oh, sorry. They were on the uh, yeah East Coast. They got a message from the East Coast ponies. So, in ironically, uh, in going the wrong way, Applejack was getting closer to the actual destination. This was this was Equestria trying to tell one of its top six members, "You have to go this way." And on that day, Applejack started to file the the, the uh, blueprints to build a new Equestrian GPS system. <laughs> so this thing never happened again. <laughs> And she would do the voice. Y'all are going the wrong way, you idiot. <laughs> Turn around next on the left, will ya? Y'all no, going the wrong up. way. <laughs> Recalculating, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we are being very offensive. <laughs> oh, no but, more yeah. than Applejack's own uh, stereotype. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. This was. This is an awesome comic. I, I forgot I forgot how much I enjoyed this one. Until you start looking at all the details again and, 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 and soak into them. And it is and it, as a final detail, we get little photos explaining everything, including that Applejack learned something. Rarity did freak out. Big Mac just destroyed another barn. <laughs> and those two poor ponies who had the whirlycopter, they I have no idea what happened. Yeah, and apparently, um, Aunt Orange and Uncle uh, Orange were the one that contacted them. Huh. Well, there you go. The East Coast oranges makes sense. Yeah, true, true. Never did find out if they're related to Babs directly. Mm. Nah, it's an apple. This is oranges. Orange, you glad we didn't talk about that? Ay, ay, ay. And that, my friends, is and let's see if I can't say this title right: Rains, Trains, and Carts with Wheels. Yay! Awesome, awesome. Don't forget the well, Sykes comic by Kitty Cook. Oh uh, yes, just a quick little life, a day in the life of Winona, which is pretty much every dog out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> Ruined everything, but oh, you're such a good doggy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> stupid doggy. The rest don't seem to think yeah. so. As a, as someone who has had three dogs in his life, it, it is pretty much like this. They are, if not for yes. dogs' adorableness and unconditional love, you'd want to throttle them. Mm-hmm. But you don't because they're awesome. <laughs> true that, true that. Okay, so um, shall we give our final thoughts? Yep, yep. All right. So, oh, well, I vote for inverted alphabetical order to keep it consistent, of course. Well, th- well, thank you kindly. I I love this comic. It is just fun. It has all these great references. It doesn't require a big villain because it's more just the conflict is against fate itself. And just seeing Applejack and Rarity play off one another. To be honest, I, I think the bulls work better here than they do in The Good, The Bad, and The Ponies. They're better as a side distraction than they are as a legitimate threat Mm -hmm. and it'll always be a little sad that they had such a funny introduction with such a awkward follow-up but i honestly i don't know if there's anything truly critical i can say other than perhaps rarity is a little too chipper at times that sometimes she overplays her role as the upbeat somewhat oblivious character other that i love it second favorite only because rarity and babs was so unexpected now, if you excuse me, I need to go see if I can actually merge Applejack and Rarity into some kind of super ship. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's... What, about, what about you, Norman? I, like I said, I, I enjoyed this comic highly, not because of the memorable moments that I had about this comic, but overall, the comic was fun, 
entertaining, filled with eye candy. Stories, the story is pretty tight. The cameo of the cattle wrestlers, they were not wasted. They they were perfect for the scenario that they were in. And if I didn't see them again, or if I were to see them again, my op- opinion of them would have been a bit different from what they gave us. To me, they would be, they would have worked well as henchmen. But in the comic that we have here, it's perfect. They're, they're perfect. They're kind of gangsters of the Wild West, and they're just aiming to get a quick buck. Nothing elaborate, straight to the point, simple. And the whole scene after that way they are hanging out at Waini Land. There was so much fun. Just just looking at our heroes just letting their mane loose and having fun. That is worth the whole ride of pain that they went through just to get on each other's nerve and learning a valuable lesson and just having fun as their reward. And at the end, still, Applejack can't get a break because of one little mistake by Granny Smith. To me, I like this comic. It's fun. And the uh, awesome work by Andy Price is still good. I, well, <laughs> my, my, my final thoughts are very much like my first impressions. It's like, this is, uh, this is probably the best comedy we have had in almost two decades. Mm-hmm. Almost. It's like this kind of, this style of, comedic timing and interaction between characters it's something that died after the uh, after the decade of the 90s was over mm-hmm. something that not a single uh, quote unquote comedy that could be considered a comedy nowadays can can pull off without you know having to resort to gross out, gross out humor or any of the Wayans brothers making an ass of themselves in front of the in front of the camera this this comic captures that feel of the 90s and 80s comedy that was so unique and so perfect because the comedy comes from the interaction of the characters but it doesn't lampoon them either it's it it works off the chemistry between the both of them which they have and lots and the, there is a lot of misery to be enjoyed but there is also a lot of resolution and a lot of lessons to be learned it's a very fun very good very well written and even betterly uh drawn and put together comic that gets the potential out of two characters that I personally love without having to flanderize them, which is something that is so difficult to pull off nowadays. And the only thing that I think it's a detraction from it is that it links with that god-awful Wild West arc with the the cattle wrestlers. wrestlers. It's like, yeah, I know, I know, Norman, I... I'm kind of disagreeing with you, but hey, it's my opinion. To me, Longhorn and his gang were a big, massive red dot in the entire comic, and but it doesn't ruin it. It's just a cameo. Mm. That's it. Nothing else. True, 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 true. It's an annoying cameo, but hey, it's just a cameo. Judging the entire comic for just one thing is completely unfair. It, the saying that the comic sucks just because of that one tiny little thing it's absolutely unfair and shouldn't be done. <laughs> Power pony is coming. <laughs> wow. Well, any, anyway, <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was it. Well, that was it. Uh, but I, I I have solved the mystery of the city bear disco. Oh, right. what is? Yes. Well, apparently there's a Disney attraction called the Country Bear Jamboree. Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. So my memory completely blanked on that. So apparently they decided, hey, if you've got Country Bear Jamboree, what's the complete opposite? It's a disco. Uh, Hey, James, do you remember that one movie that uh, starred Christopher Walken? Uh, you have to be more specific. Oh, wait, are you talking about, this is not over, bears! <laughs> yeah, that one. Is, is, is that the one? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I remember wasn't that movie. <laughs> wait, wasn't that one a terrible movie? It is! It, it is it a is. terrible movie. Well, the, then why are we trying to bring down Christopher Walken no, by be, talking because, about that movie? Because, uh, that, that movie was called Country Bears. Whoop. De friggin' do. <laughs> this is the best Christopher Walken I can do. 
Uh, and you got to deal with it, you rare jack shippers. <laughs> yep. Oh, now I'm turning in Chicago. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I, wow. I really am no good at impressions. Uh, that's what you say. That's what you say. Nah, it's fine. You have to buy a voice modulator and then you can do any kind of impression. Yeah. You will be unstoppable. But I will sound like a transformer. <laughs> Still. Well, anywho. Uh, Silver, next week's comic, what is it? Oh, we have Friends Forever number nine, where we learned that Granny Smith is a producist. <laughs> what? She she is incredibly biased and against uh, oranges. She is a producist, <laughs> which probably is why she thinks all them orange ghost apples look the same. <laughs> hey. Uh. No, no, nowadays, there are ists for everything. So this is, Smith is a... racists, producists. Photosynthesis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those 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 darn shadow dwellers have no place amongst us photosynthesists. <laughs> photosynthesists ists. There you go. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, is there, like is there rare, a, rarity rarity swallowing a hoof? Oh boy. Is there anything is there anything for na- nuts? Nuts cysts or something oh, like that? No, no. Because I am I'm, I'm no. allergic to nuts. So Thanks. I cannot uh, That just I, I cannot means you're a, nuts and I hate nuts. That just means you're a nutsy. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not nuts, nuts. E, I uh, just, I, I, I cannot eat nuts. They, they, they drive me nuts, and they make me <laughs> ill stuff. No, 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 no. Save us out of here! Uh, Get us out of here! Man. Take us out, oh, Silver. No. Take us out. Take us out. Take us out. Take us. No, no. Well, no, no uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Why not? Go ahead. Why not? All right. Well, everyone, thank you for listening to the MBS show. I have been Silver Quill, and now I go to create the Rare Jack hybrid. Oh, God. And I am Norman Sanzo, the guy who's uh, going to listen in to Sweetie Bot's rant on this. (laughs) And I am going to rethink my life. (laughs) I'm going to go home to rethink my life. (laughs) See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Adios. Adios.